Um, what I'm going to do is very quickly, actually, uh, I'm going to go through at least all of these tabs up there. If you can imagine that. Which spread out over about 40 minutes is probably two to three minutes of tab. So we probably won't watch everything, but we'll be able to look at stuff. So um, one of the really cool things about ActLab that you all know is that uh, we documented everything we did. And when we started documenting, as I mentioned in our introduction, um, it was very basic, rudimentary documentation that at the time was very cutting edge. So uh, the fact that we were um, programming sites, that we learned how to do HTML, um, we had our own servers, we had our own uh, 256 IP block at UT that was unrestricted and didn't have any of the firewall restrictions that Brandon alludes to in his talk. So they just didn't really exist. They weren't really monitoring or, or tracking um, the kind of, of bandwidth we were using. It actually wasn't until about 2005, I think, in ActLab that they really started kind of noticing whether or not we were doing something. And that was when we had uploaded or downloaded 60 gigs of like Swedish uh, videos with BitTorrent. And they like called us out and were like, hey, you downloaded like 60 gigs of torrented videos in one day. And we were like, yeah, it was awesome. Did you see how, like, did you see how fast it was? And they were like, yeah, we did. Like, that's some serious bandwidth. And we we're like, yeah. It's cool. It's, don't worry, it's all copyleft, Creative Commons license. And they were like, touche. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so, uh, so back in the day, the way we uh, kind of documented our phenomenon was that each student would make a website. So, in our websites, I mean, if we click on them, uh, this is kind of like going to archive.org in the sense that um, they really do vary in uh, are those student sites we're looking at that list? Yeah. Yes. That's like right. like Rob's like. So that means one or two like, of them are members of Building and Ground. Yeah. So Rob's like, does that mean that like I'm in, uh, in there? And I'm like, possibly. <laughs> uh, yeah. Like let's let's go find out. Oh no. We're looking for Rob Fan oh, uh oh. They like there's Rob Fancher. Ah, See? Cool. And so this was like Rob was like, I have to learn HTML to like make this happen. And this is what would happen was we'd post up your, uh, oh, don't worry. I know how to fix this. this yeah, is just, that's just a link. Yeah. Well, um, so what I was going to say about that, let me get back. You can fix it. Yeah, yeah, I can, just, I can just come over here and I just go like this. Because I'm old school. I'm old school. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not fret, guys. Don't worry. I got her. I know y'all aren't fretting either, but we just sit here and we like push buttons like that. Yeah, so, because, you know, and, and where did I learn this? In the Act Lab, you know? I learned like that, I even learned how to copy and paste. So, um. Who knows how to make an automatic redirect? Please see me afterwards. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, we need to get like a bunch of auto redirect going, Jeremy. <laughs> it's like Jeremy so, like I don't know oh yes I do know how to do that okay so um, so my point of showing all this is that uh, we literally everybody made a website so you heard uh, Rob go like hey like I, I was in Act Lab and I had a website we're like yeah you, you do have a website it's online and that's what I was talking about before and so one of the things that we did when uh, I started Convergent Media was that um, I had all my students make websites but uh, I didn't have a server at UIW, and uh, that really sucked because it meant that like students would go on and create, <laughs> would create all these uh, websites, but I wouldn't really have an ultimate way to make sure that they stayed up forever like Sandy did. And uh, and so what we did was we created uh, a group called the Convergent Media Collective. And um, the Convergent Media Collective is uh, a website that I host on my own hosting for like $10 a month. And um, it literally just hosts articles. It uses WordPress, because WordPress was really big then. And, and surprisingly enough, a lot of people might be like shrugging, like, oh, WordPress. But somehow Brandon and I worked with like the WordPress developers when we were going to uh, 
UT. And uh, when I did my dissertation, um, we it was Andy Shelton, right? What's his name? I think that's what it was. He would come and, and co-work with us in, in Sandy's office. And he was like, yes, I'm one of the five developers for WordPress. And um, I would show him what I was working on and he would like give us feedback. So we were really proud to use WordPress, surprisingly, compared to most people that were just like, I have to use WordPress because that's what everybody uses. Um, so we didn't sell out, we bought in, you know? Um, and, uh, and so I had uh, one of my students who is now like a, I guess like the Vice President of Communications at Schreiner University, uh, did the, the graphic design for us. And uh, we really liked it. And we just started building out this site and it was very communal. Um, it's so communal that sometimes I'll forget and, and uh, I'll be like, hey, somebody will be like, like Jeremy will be like, hey, can you make this change? And then he's like, oh yeah, I have a login. And I'm like, oh yeah, you do. You can make that change, you know? Or John will be like, hey, can I uh, stream your, uh, your videos? And I'll be like, sure. And he's like, I'll just do it from the Convergent Media Facebook page because you gave me admin, remember? And I'm like, oh yeah, sweet. So we really are very communal with, with the controls on it. I'm not, I think yesterday when we were taking our group photo, I said, I'm not the artist, I'm just a facilitator. So it's one of those things where um, when we started documenting our work, we really kind of, uh, are trying to just highlight each other's efforts rather than kind of highlighting, uh, being about highlighting your efforts. And so we have like a members page that is obviously always gonna be out of date just like our ACLAB page was. And, uh, but we have, you know, some people like, uh, uh, y'all haven't gotten to meet, meet Sid, but Sid's really cool, and Andy, y'all met Andy. Kay was who was gonna come and give a talk. Uh, and then just many other people, like this really handsome fellow named John Frazy, and uh, Jonathan, who's going to be coming later, myself, Chris Peter, this guy Gary Schwartz, this whole slew of people that have been uh, contributing over the years have either come in or come out of our our, uh, our collective, and, uh, and we actually have more as well. So uh, in this website, uh, we actually created an archives uh, link and the archives link just has uh, an archive of all of our articles and so what I'm going to do is uh, I want to show you all just a couple of projects and things that we've documented and done throughout the years to give you an idea uh, of kind of where we took a lot of what we learned in the ACT Lab and uh, uh, did a twist on it so um, and this is not in chronological order just so you know. I know y'all were hoping for it to be, but it's just not. So uh, the first project I want to show real quick is that um, there's this thing called Contemporary Art Month uh, here in San Antonio. It's probably actually a national thing, I assume. But uh, they had Contemporary Art Month, and they said that uh, we had a, a really big problem where uh, there was a diversity and inclusion issue. It's, it's a theme that comes up with me a lot because um, I'm really friendly with white people. <laughs> And they a lot of time forget that I'm Latino. And, yeah, uh, more than just one. And so, uh, so a lot of times what happens is uh, people get really comfortable with me. And um, when that happens, people kind of um, forget, uh, they let their guard down. And so um, I'll be hanging out with a lot of people that are doing Contemporary Art Month, and then I have to remind them that everybody that they've picked to be in Contemporary Art Month is all white. And uh, we're in a, a town with 70% Latinos and uh, a bunch of artists. And so we have like these huge uh, issues where we had like in 2016, we had this diversity and inclusion talk where uh, they forgot to invite like one of the main Chicana curators here in town uh, to the feminism and uh, art diversity discussion. And instead brought in a Puerto Rican uh, head of a like multi-million dollar art base uh, facility, uh, which is like Pace Picante uh, kind of style. Yeah. So uh, and they were like, well, she's Latina. I mean, come on. And we were like, yeah, no, that's not what we meant. So uh, in this video, I kind of uh, call them out and yell at them, and but I'm very nice about it. Uh, a bunch of people were yelling, and then and and, the, and this really nice woman from the National Association of uh, 
Latino arts and culture also kind of yelled at them for a good 10 minutes and everybody cheered and it was something that would have been very act loud proud kind of moment where the, the crowd was just really heckling the crowd out of these city officials for thinking they were going to kind of try and pull this off. So um, we started talking about inequity and equity and things like that. So um, then one day, like I get, uh, so the other problem about me not being an artist is that um, I look like an artist. So a lot of times, well, what happened is uh, a big institution that knows me, they'll be like, well, you're not an artist, but like, we know you know artists. Could you like get somebody that knows how to like hack and stuff and maybe do something with code and stuff, you know, and stuff? And I'll be like, yeah, I could do that, or I could just do it myself, but yeah, that's cool. I mean, I'm not hurt or anything. And so, um, so this project uh, got picked for Contemporary Art Month at like the main Blue Star Contemporary Art Museum here in San Antonio. And uh, we ended up making this thing called the BZ Micron Super System. And what it is is a, uh, a computer that we made up and uh, this guy, Chris Hardy, who is one of the co-founders of the hackerspace here in San Antonio with Jeremy, uh, and I teamed up and we built this like retro computer here and uh, kind of made this false history about how we were founders of this company. And um, I actually like did all the graphics and made this like big press release from back in the day and like printed it out and copied it a couple times so that it had this nice look to it. It just seems totally wasted on this on this projector, but it felt good at the time. And uh, and we talk about how we how you know we were at Comdex '83, and and our computer was supposed to take over the world, but unfortunately it, it never actually worked, and so we ended up failing and and, and burning misery miserably uh, uh, as we we ventured into this space. So. Um, Oh, man, and the computer I, did stuff. It was there, exhibited. Right. So, so then uh, our re, our re, our revised computer, um, actually, uh, what what we actually brought, they were like, well, we really want something that's interactive for the the community. And we were like, okay. So what we built was we built a password encoding computer. So you would go in and you would type your password in, and then it was going to like encode it for you and encrypt it, and instead it just read your password out loud to everybody. <laughs> and, uh, and so, and, and then it had like random comments it would make. So what I decided to do was make a video that uh, kind of highlighted how great our system was, and it was like the demo video. Oh my gosh. From back to <laughs> and so, um, it was actually a really uh, uh, a big hit. It worked flawlessly for the whole like three month installation, and uh, they couldn't get it back to us fast enough. It was funny. <laughs> so we took like a good month trying to get it back from them. Uh, so that's that's one random project. Um, another project we did was uh, so I, uh, one of the cool things about ActLab is that we don't really encourage group work and we don't like group work because group work usually uh, means that somebody's going to end up doing all the work and somebody else is going to like pay them to do all the work or just be lazy and not help out or something like that. And because uh, in academia there's just not enough at stake. Like if there was money at stake. That would maybe motivate people a little bit, but like ultimately in academia, there's just people that don't care. So if, 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 if I'm like the cheerleader guy, it's like it doesn't matter that I'm like, but this is gonna be so awesome, and people would just be like, yeah, but I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. and, and so um, so my students for this one showcase uh, were like, no, like we don't have to go, Joey. We wanna do stuff, we wanna make things. And I was like, okay, well, you're all gonna do your own projects, but what we will do is we will come up with a common objective with your projects, and that uh, we're going to be we're going to build this really huge screen, and then y'all are going to uh, show your work on it. And so what we ended up doing was uh, literally building a really big screen 
and uh, hopefully the internet will, there we go, it will let us see. So we, we, we like went to Home Depot and prototype, and there was this uh, fellow named Jeremy Zunger who uh, helped us come up with our designs, and, and we worked with the students over probably, what, three weeks uh, on the design, and, uh, and we ended up like going to my, at the time I lived in an apartment that had it in a garage, and we went to the apartment, and I bought all the materials, and uh, all my students learned how to, like, work with, work with the tools. Power tools. Power tools. And it was funny because they were like, I've never used anything uh, like it. Yeah, anything like it. And we ended up building this 36 foot by 8 foot screen that used three projectors and used what we call a matrox triple head to like tie them all together. And so it was like, you know, it, it would take up a big portion of this room if we had it in here. And uh, we, we ended up using it more than once, um, but it was really cool. And uh, we ended up having some some students make some really good projects. And of course, in Act Lab fashion, we had lots of pizza at this photo comes up. Yes, I mean, we just, we, we always, and, uh, but in San Antonio, one of the things that's different, I think, uh, and this needs to be noted, uh, that's different between Act Lab and Convergent Media is that, um, or I should say until I came to Act Lab, because we did have this at my aunt lab for uh, dissertation of things, the sweet bread. You know, we have a lot of Mexican pan dulce, and that, uh, you know, is just a different kind of cultural experience. So if you'll notice over here, we have like a lot of molletes and little sugar cookies and things like that. It kind of adds a little bit of a different kind of feel uh, to the presentations. So, um, so yeah, it was, it was really interesting that night. We also had some people doing some connect work which was always fun. We, uh, and then we would always bring out um, like stuff for the audience because like they say, they want people in the audience to touch stuff. So we'd always bring out like the makey makey and let people touch bananas because they seem to like the bananas. So um, another project that I ran into was uh, with this guy named Wei Han. And uh, I met him actually through Angelica here at the Institute of Texan Cultures. And he was telling me about uh, this book he had made about Chinese calligraphy and how it covered 12,000 years of calligraphy, and I was just like, that's like a really long time, man. I mean, almost as long as the U.S. has been around. <laughs> and, uh, and so um, he was like, well, I'm really looking for artists again to maybe do some kind of interpretive work with some of the calligraphy. And so um, I just thought it was, I mean, it just was mind-boggling to me that it was like, this was, you know, since 3,500 years ago, since like 3,200, and it's like all of them are for horse, but there were all these different kinds of uh, calligraphy. And uh, me being lady, uh, I was just like, well, I just want to look, work with these things visually and kind of see where we can get. And Jeremy was like, dude, we should just laser cut some stuff out and see what happens. So I went ahead and just got some uh, like black cardstock, like heavy cardstock. And just laser cut it, and then just got some like uh, trans translucent paper, like tissue paper, and put it behind, and just used like a little LED white box. It looks something like like this. You see what I'm saying? Like just literally LED, some paper, and then our laser cut, and uh, and then Jeremy, collect you know Jeremy and I collectively decided that. Um, we should try doing some bokeh filters. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Yeah, some bokeh filters. And so we laser cut this, uh, this symbol for horse out. And, uh, and then we, there was a, like a, is it 64? I think it was an 8 by 8 by 8. So oh, okay. An 8 by 8 by 8 LED, uh, uh, LED array cube. And so we went ahead and just kind of took that and uh, worked with some of the bokeh that, that we were able to create and uh, just kind of experimented with this for a while. We maybe experimented like a week yeah. over like three days of actual doing the testing. But, uh, but he really enjoyed like our results. I really hope someday we can kind of meet back up with that guy and work on it. But that's what, that's what the, uh, the, bo the bokeh ended up looking like was this really nice kind of uh, interesting effect. And when we were talking about the uh, uh, 
Eclipse, when you're all kind of rich, you were mentioning how you got like these really nice shadows. I was, it was making me think of this project. Yeah, I can see her. It doesn't look like a horse, though. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that's the horse is, is, is the calligraphy, you know. It's, it's, it looks like an alien Jesse. I, I like agree with you, you know. I mean, I, I, this, you know, hey, it's, it's, it, was, it was an art. So, um, so another kind of thing that happened was somehow uh, the new media professor at UTSA didn't get tenure, and um, she ended up moving to Ann Arbor and became the director of the Ann Arbor Film Festival. And so the next year she asked me if I would apply to give us a talk at the Ann Arbor Film Festival, and I said, sure. So I went to the Ann Arbor Film Festival, and much like I accidentally do a lot of times is that uh, a lot of white people get very comfortable with me and start talking about diversity and inclusion. And because I am like Latino, but I don't say like queso and guacamole correctly, and so they feel very, very, very comfortable. And uh, so what happened was I got really comfortable, and I was like, dude, like, so I've never been to Michigan. This is Ann Arbor, Detroit, like Detroit. I flew into Detroit, it was like 30 minutes from here. I'm like, um, y'all see y'all are really community oriented. Are there any African Americans like in this area? Because like y'all are all white, and they were just like, "Whoa, like we are like liberal left people, and we are very inclusionary." Okay, and I was just like, "Okay, so um, so where are all the African Americans? Well, they're just not really interested in what we do. So that's why they're not here." And I was just like, "All right, so uh, I'm gonna go now. I'll see you guys later." So um, I, I gave my presentation, it really was a lot like that, other than afterwards I had a lady yell at me telling me that she wasn't a racist, and I was like, I, I believe you, you're not a racist. Um, and I was like, I'm never gonna get invited back, right? So uh, then, the, then the, the, the uh, executive director hit me up, she was like, I really hope you can apply again, and maybe come and talk about you know, some of these issues that you brought up, and I was like, oh, I can do that. Like, I'm so down. So I put together an African-American panel uh, and brought all new media students that uh, make media and talk about their work. And so um, it, was, it was crazy. It, we had a crazy, crazy time. Like my students uh, got taken out on like these crazy dinners and uh, had like, you know, $100 steaks and stuff. They were just like, this is nuts. And, uh, and then, we, and then my student made this film and showed it, and I was just like, wow, dude, you really, you really made me proud for him. Um, let's see here. I still hang. Like the fruits of labor once labeled free for freedom, nothing's changed. On the change exchange for services, nooses loosened, replaced by gold rope. I still hang. Because I'm brainwashed to just do it. Give me space to jam as my Air Jordans take flight. But not too hot. Know your place. It's basketball courts or court dates. I still hang. Like lynchings celebrated in the same fashion as March Madness. Labs to cut the rope, but leave the fruit ripe for picking. I still hang, because fruit never falls far from the tree, if it ever falls at all. So no surprise, I still hang on hardwoods. Uh, and uh, obviously the, the, the 
project definitely got some good reaction. People were very quiet when, when it was over with. It was, I, I mean, I didn't tell them to make that. Like, we, you know, Sandy and I, we always tell people, yeah, be creative, do something crazy. They're like, oh yeah, we'll do that. And we're like, dude, you're not gonna do anything crazy. We're just gonna do whatever you wanna do. And then he showed me that and I was just like, whoa. <laughs> okay, like you got the point. You got it. You got you, you got it. You know, and uh, and it was funny because I had talked to him about aesthetic, and uh, I had been telling him about like all these abstract techniques you could use, and so he actually incorporated the technique I told him to, uh, or not told him to, but just like had talked to him about, which was uh, uh, um, recording with the DSLR and then taking it to VHS and bringing it back so that it kind of has this like unidentifiable look to it, uh, which is why the video, like you're watching it, you're just kind of like, I can't contextualize what I'm looking at in terms of medium and aesthetic, uh, cinematographically uh, and technologically, and, and that, I thought that was a really cool thing that he did as well. So, um, so yeah, and then like we literally, uh, I took them all over town, it was, it was cool. And they got to meet this crazy guy, Gary uh, Schwartz, that I'll tell you all about in a minute. So then, um, even here at, 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 uh, at the ITC, we did a project where um, the students, and I'm going to play this in, in kind of lower. We're going to walk you through the new exhibit at the Institute of Texan Cultures. It's called Converging Texan Cultures. And so when you first walk in, right here on the left hand corner, you see a uh, pretty much a very immersive view of uh, uh, which uh, explains a lot of the text architecture. Of the so I'm going to talk over Johnny a little bit just because uh, I want to give just a little more contextualization than he is. So um, we literally had done some consulting for ITC and kept telling them we didn't want to get paid. And then finally they were like, well, how do you want to get paid? And we were like, we want to have an installation in your museum. And they were like, whoa. Okay, and they were like, well, what kind of size of space do you want? We were like, we want the smallest space you have because we know we're not that good. You know, we're just like trying to, to work out some ideas. And so this is our Stonehenge installation piece. It was supposed to be like an eight foot by six foot table that we were doing a short throw projector on. It ended up being like a two by three foot table. Um, but it still kind of came out one to one. Um, we actually used Andy, who y'all met a couple of times this weekend. Uh, he has a loft and he has a ventless stove, and so we set up a Canon 60 over it, and um, we shot like a bunch of Texas meals that are prepared, and so people could see all these dishes being made, and you could literally stand over it and check it out. And it was also during a time when um, I'd gotten the idea because I met with Brandon. I guess you were working on that like 2010, 2011. He had built like this short throw projector table for the school of information and that's kind of like where I, I kind of gave him that idea and then when I got really serious with Jeremy and working together it was because of this project here where we used the connect and uh, worked on some like hand gesture uh, or, uh, uh, programming and I had gotten the SDK for the connect and I had figured out how to use it a little bit but Jeremy was just like dude why don't we just like write our own thing this is, this is so easy and I was just like well, yeah, like, let's do it. And so um, so we ended up, uh, and Helica, again, just like how she helped us put this conference on, just completely facilitated the whole, the whole experience. And, um, and so we had those three, three pieces that we put in, and there were about probably eight students that uh, collectively worked on it. I believe they're in one of these photos somewhere. Yeah, there they are. And... Uh, I think almost all of them went on to get their masters and all of them are, are super successful, and that's Kay, who we were talking about the media producer. So um, the next project I wanna show y'all, I know I'm kinda of going through this fast, but that's how I work, is uh, how we got to get to do our project, was that, um, so the ITC uh, asked us, they were like, um, the Smithsonian has this Native American and skateboarding uh, piece they want us to show, but they want us to pay them $30,000 for this Smithsonian custom skateboarding simulator. And I was just like, yeah, why don't we just use Tony Hawk? And they were like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, you know, Tony Hawk makes a, a skateboarding game. Like, it's really good. I just bought it uh, <laughs> at, at, on clearance. It was 20 bucks. It came with the board. 
And they were like, well, what if the board breaks? And I just looked at them and I said, and I was about uh, 310 pounds at the time, not my weight, current weight. I just looked and I said, I play this game. We are good. Like, I can, I can get on this thing and like go crazy on it. I said, if you need to, buy four of them, you know? <laughs> but at <laughs> 20 bucks a piece, that's $80, okay? And they were just like, all right, we get it. I was like, you just need one Xbox. So they do, they call up Tom, Tony Hawk, uh, representative, and they get permission and, and they use it. But uh, this video here is the video of me convincing them that this is a really easy game to play. And so we got um, their curriculum and development uh, uh, lead to like actually try playing. And this is Ann Halika, who, you know, who's the executive director. And, uh, and so I would just have students come with me to these meetings. So instead of me coming, I would be like, is it okay if I bring a student or two? And then I'd bring like six to eight students with me and we'd show up. And this is kind of like how uh, the students would learn how to do consulting uh, in a very informal way with low stakes but high energy, meaning that we weren't, none of us were gonna get paid. I wasn't getting paid. It wasn't like, they were like, why should I help you? You're the one that's getting all the money. I was like, no, we're just all doing this for fun. And, uh, and getting some experience. And so this is kind of how I would build up these relationships here in town. Uh, I'm not gonna show that one right now. If I show it, I'll show it later. I'll put you over there. The next uh, uh, piece that I'm kind of gonna transition over to is that as I was, I was, as I was here in San Antonio, um, I would get uh, regularly frustrated with San Antonio. I'd be like, San Antonio's 15 years behind, like Austin is so great, like why don't we have like Austin, blah, blah, blah. Everybody wanted to shoot me. It was like, not a good situation. So, uh, Jeremy would also hear me rant and rant and rant. And, uh, and so we started talking about things. And I was like, you know what, like let's really talk about what's going on with San Antonio. And, and we realized it was like food scarcity, uh, meaning not enough food, uh, people don't have enough food to eat, uh, education issues, uh, teen pregnancy issues, uh, real issues that were occurring and we started looking at the data and um, I was like okay now I know why like we, we're having a lot of these issues and it's at a high percent you know these issues are at, like a really high percentage it's not just kind of a minority of the people there's close to either a high a high level of minority to majority of people are experiencing these phenomena and so what we did was we uh, went and mapped it out like we were talking about yesterday with um, with Stan and uh, Aaron made this this graphic and uh, it's like our pizza slice theory is that like this is basically if San Antonio was a pizza which all act labbies understand pizza is that like if you had a pizza like this is what the pizza of San Antonio would look like which unless you're lactose intolerant does not look like a great pizza you know and was, okay, we understand the data, we understand what's going on, what can we do about it? And so we had kind of like two ideas. One idea was we can map. So we started mapping a little bit, uh, cultural uh, art and technology resources. And so we literally developed like a back end on, on the WordPress. And we've like very slowly been adding uh, uh, cultural resources here in San Antonio that promote advocacy. So then, don't worry, this is the boring part, in case y'all are wondering. So then what we did was we started write, uh, uh, doing articles on community engagement. And then we just started doing community engagement. We started going into the community. And so uh, some of the articles that we would do uh, were, let me come over here. Like for example, one time I was invited to go with this uh, nonprofit called uh, Systemic, and what they do is they have this geek bus, and they take kids and they put them on this bus, and they get this experience during school, and they have them do some kind of like little robotic thing. But what was actually culturally interesting to me was that uh, these students in Del Rio, Texas, had a uh, a club for their robotics club and our team, and the club like energy was what was really interesting to me culturally. And so uh, I had them explain to me like their mascot, and I was just like, man, this is so cool. So here's the, here's the explanation. 
Okay, so what's the story behind the emoji? I know you already told me, but why don't you all tell me with the video? So speak up because I think it'll help. One of the AR innovators, uh, the freshman, he came up with the idea to do this. It was like, so we did it in tribute to him. And what is it? It's an emoji box. Um, he was basically really eccentric and he did a lot of really like out of the box stuff. So he came up with an emoji box. He came up with the whole outfit idea and he said, you don't have to do it, but it would be nice if you did. He, since he came up with so much of the brand, we just decided why not. And you have t-shirts? Yeah. Usually we wear khakis and like black shoes, but we decided to go not to because we're casual. And this is one of their friends. This is the actual, what the design that I made here. It's based on. The actual what? That's what it's based on. Yeah, the design. And who made that? One of the girls on our team, she, she went home, got a bunch of boxes, cut them up, and then just, just made this and painted it. And where do y'all live? Del Rio, Texas. How's Del Rio? Great. Y'all proud to be from Del Rio? Yes. What makes it awesome? History. Yeah? Yeah. And that's their, like, uh, uh, teacher. Makes it awesome. Their teacher. I was just like, whoa. It would be like them saying, so what makes San Antonio awesome? And all y'all being like, Joey Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> you just, like, fall back in. And just kind of paint. But what, I mean, it's just like, there's so nonchalant about like this kid in this cardboard box walking around that's like this emoji as their mascot. Oh, that's a person. Yeah, oh yeah, there's so many steamy. <laughs> See the little head, like the little eye. <laughs> it's just like, oh my gosh, like that is just next level kind of stuff, uh, at least for me, when interacting with kids. And so, um, you know, we, we would go to like maker fairs. Like John and I went and did this maker fair, and uh, this maker fair was totally weird. Uh, oh yeah. It was inside. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, I remember now. It's like, Joe, it was weird. It looks like we're having a great time. So we worked with these kids, and we did a bunch of stop motion animation, and because um, we had we had a pretty good setup for that. And uh, this was like this because this is a small town outside of San Antonio. They had a uh, a, a beauty queen like a uh, pageantry group come through the maker fair and uh, and somehow we ended up teaching them how to do stop motion animation but what was actually really weird and why we would never go back there is that um, in addition to the maker fair they also had a, a confederate reenactment group at the, at the maker fair at this at, uh, Floresville uh, maker space and um, it was really offensive, and I told them something about it. They were just like, "What are you like? Why are you so upset?" I'm like, "You have Confederates like literally walking around with guns, like at a maker fair, and they're just like, I don't, I don't know what you mean. Like, what's weird about that?" And I was just like, "Yeah, we're never coming back to this. Just so you know." So, um, so these were the kinds of like things that we would get ourselves into. And then the last uh, one of the last couple of things I want to show you is. Um, this Luminaria project. So this Luminaria project was done with this guy named Gary Schwartz. He's an Academy Award uh, nominated animator. And um, what makes Gary kind of crazy is that he's crazy. And so uh, when I met him at the Ann Arbor Film Festival, and he was like, hi, I'm crazy. And I was like, you're crazy. And he was like, yes. And um, I was like, well, what do you do? He's like, well, I work with like disenfranchised communities all over the world and do stop motion animation workshops. And I was like, sure, okay. And uh, then he was like, yeah, I'm going to Armenia. Uh, I know they're kind of like in a war zone right now, but I'm gonna go drop in there and we're gonna do uh, workshops with kids. It's like, okay. So uh, I kind of put that in the back of my head. And then somehow, because I know about diversity inclusion and then uh, know how to talk to people. I was invited to uh, be on the Luminaria Artist Selection Committee. Go ahead. You met Gary. You forgot that part. The connection. Like, at the Ann Arbor Film Festival when Joey was like, yeah, there's no brown people. Gary was in the audience and was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. So yeah. I yeah, Gary was the one guy that was like, yeah, man. Yeah, I'm down with them. And he, he had me have like a three hour lunch with him afterwards. Talking about how these people don't get it. It is what he actually does, if you ask him, is he says, subvert authority. 
Yes, that's his, that's his claim to fame. And so um, I was put on this artist selection committee and basically I explained to San Antonio artists, curators that, uh, predominantly white artists, curators, communities, that it's not good enough to invite people to apply for your uh, festival. That is not equity, okay? Equity is going to the neighborhoods and finding artists and encouraging them to apply for your festival. That's equity. And they were just like, well, how would we do that? Why would we like, that's just overwhelming. And I'm like, well, that's what I've been doing for the past year, so I already know everybody, and I'm gonna help you all do this. And so I literally just started putting them in contact with all of these different social groups on the east side, on the west side, on the south side, all the areas that Stan talked about that like have nobody in it, there are people there. That's why I was kind of questioning them about it. Um, and there are artists there, and there are people that are making great things. And so we would go into these spaces and meet people, and one of the people I met was this guy named Victor Zuniga, who worked at this apartment complex on the west side that was part of Saha, the San Antonio Housing Authority, and uh, Jeremy and I would go and do all this programming. We taught kids how to play kites, we taught them how to solder, we taught them how to do stuff for animation. And uh, when we were looking for a community-oriented project, I was like, well, why don't we bring Gary down and do this stop-motion animation project with him? And then at the same time, uh, some of y'all met Jesse last night when, when Jeremy was presenting his uh, uh, the Z figure. And he said he worked at this lighting company, and this, there's a legitimate, like, big-ass lighting company here in town. And uh, Jerry was like, you know, y'all should have Luminar here talk to us. And so I set up a meeting, and we went and talked to them, and they were like, we would love to facilitate having some resources for y'all. And by resources, they meant, like, you know, an LED panel as big as this curtain over here, um, and things like that, and multiple ones. And so uh, what we ended up doing was putting together literally Luminaria for the city without actually us being in charge of putting Luminaria on at all. And so this video that I'm gonna show you here kind of shows you both um, the actual installation, which was based around this motto, I don't know where it came from, called Make Stuff. And uh, what I did was I had the kids and I got this audio recorder and I put it right here. I said, okay, kids, I want y'all to just walk in a, in a line around the table because then you knew they were going to be like, what? Because I know they're going to end up running and getting excited. And I just want you to say, make stuff. And so they would run and they say, make stuff. And um, this is kind of what came out of it. So all the lighting you see, the LED panel, everything was like us making this happen, kind of hacking a system. Even the drone footage was shot by Luis, who catered our you know, and the music by us.
So thanks, y'all, get the idea. I'm going to go ahead and turn the lights on because um, we're getting close to needing to wrap up. The, uh, so the crazy thing uh, kind of about what we were doing, and uh, or at least in my opinion, that's the crazy thing about what we were doing, is that we kind of took uh, a lot of what we learned in the Act Lab and kind of said, well, how can we actually go out and start going into the community and kind of implementing and pollinating these concepts into spaces. And so we literally, for the past, I guess, we started doing this in 2012. So I guess for the past six years, all we've been doing is experimenting. And we're not saying we have anything consistently correct yet, but it's definitely something that's been interesting to go out and do. And, uh, and we've always tried to embody the ideas and concepts that we learned in that lab to do that. So anyways, I hope you all enjoyed checking out uh, some of the ways that um, we've kind of taken on uh, the convergent media, I mean the Act Lab uh, uh, essence and kind of transformed it here in, in San Antonio and the way in which our landscape is. So thank you all very much. <laughs>